Okay, so I'm going to talk about this cross-section of a spinal cord, and I'm going to talk about how it's going to be relevant to the autonomic nervous system, our unconscious nervous system. So you know that you are looking at a section of spinal cord that is from T1 to L2, and you know this for a few reasons. One, you see here the sympathetic ganglion is being indicated, and then two, a lateral horn. So a lateral horn is present when you have cell bodies of preganglionic neurons of the autonomic nervous system. So if you see a lateral horn, then you know that you're dealing with the autonomic nervous system. So just to review some basics of the spinal cord is right there is the gray matter, and then you have the white matter outside of it where you have myelination on the processes of the neurons. So gray matter, white matter, you have posterior, here you have anterior, so that's the anterior median fissure, posterior median sulcus, and then you have your uh, posterior horn, anterior horn of the gray matter, you know, like we've already said, lateral horn, you know, this right here is indicating uh, spinal nerve, so remember, information comes, that's a, a dorsal root ganglion, Information is going to come and enter, sensory information will enter into the posterior horn, and then motor information will go out of the anterior horn. Let's see. So, you know, you can review the other structures on the basics of the spinal cord, but the purpose of this is just to talk about how it's going to play a role in the autonomic nervous system. So, what you see here is lateral horn. So the autonomic nervous system has two motor neurons in it. And so the deal is the first cell body is located in the lateral horn of levels T1 to L2 in the spinal cord. And then it will pass out of the anterior horn. It will come up here into the spinal nerve, and then it's going to enter right there. That right there is called the white ramus communicans. It's called that because it has myelination on it still. The first neuron of this two-neuron chain is going to be lightly myelinated. And so we jump down here, and you can see there's the, the cell body we talked about, lateral horn. It's going to pass up for here, and now it's going to come into the white ramus communicans. And it will synapse with the second neuron if it's going to use a spinal nerve to get to its target, and it will go through this structure, shown up here, the gray ramus communicans. So the one that's more medial is gray ramus. The one that is more lateral is the white ramus. And, and so you know, that is how um, the white ramus is how we get into a sympathetic ganglion, and then we synapse, and if we're going to jump back onto a spinal nerve, then the gray ramus, and it's gray because now the second neuron is not myelinated, that will jump you know, through the gray ramus and jump back on the spinal nerve. Remember, there are splanchnic nerves where the, the first neuron will pass through the ganglion without synapsing. So there's a lot more to this model than what I'm talking about, than what I've talked about, but I just want to stress you know, the importance for the autonomic nervous system. So the autonomic nervous system, you know, the pathways have two motor neurons. You know, the sympathetic nervous system, the first cell body originates in T1 to L2. So that's how we know that this is sympathetic nervous system. We see the sympathetic ganglion, so we know this is T1 to L2. Posterior horn, anterior horn, lateral horn. If you don't have cell bodies of the sympathetic nervous system in T1 to L2, then you wouldn't have a lateral horn. You know, so S2 to S4 will also have a lateral horn, but remember that's parasympathetic, and that has nothing to do with having a, a sympathetic chain ganglion. You know, so you know, there, are other, there are some other spinal cord levels that will have lateral horn, S2 to S4, but then they won't be feeding into the sympathetic ganglion. So that's a basic discussion about how this model pertains to the autonomic nervous system.